When you've got multi-generational customers or multi-generational employees, there's something there. I'm a second generation master craftsman, second generation master carpenter, third generation contractor. Actually, my dad was the number two buyer from Dunn Lumber for a lot of years. One of the great things about tearing apart a house that's over 100 years old is that you actually almost get to step in the footprints of the people who built the house. It's so hard to really, you, for you guys to understand what it was like to operate in those days. Of course, it didn't look anything like this. <laughs> you know, we'd wash the trucks together, mow the lawn together, and do all the shit work. And um, I've had every single job there is in this company from cleaning toilets on up. My first job, I would mow the lawn. A lot of people that I've been in college with, and they, they would come by and say, what are you doing at the lumber yard here? You should be downtown in some high rise behind a desk somewhere. You know, you've got a degree in marketing and so on and so forth. Well, I'm doing this just while I'm waiting to get a permanent job or something. My grandfather, was a sharp guy. And he began his business back in Rhinelander, Wisconsin. Albert L. Dunn kept the ownership in his name, but Charles and Ed built the yards. And from the start, my uncle and father just saw if they did the right thing with the employees, they'd stick around, and same thing with the customers. During the Depression, the, the people in the area knew that we had to save and some people trusted Ed and Charlie Dunn more than they trusted the banks because of the, uh, the crash. And they would bring their money down and Ed and Charlie would put it in, in envelopes with their name on it and put it in the safe for them. Their word was their bond. Their word was their bond. But they had a fire. In 1938, all the inventory and, and the buildings were destroyed but the vault stood in with all of the cash and the valuables in it. Within about 60 days of starting construction, um, they had this building that we're sitting in right here. Before the box stores arrived, our largest day was Saturday. absolutely crazy on Saturday we'd have to station somebody at the front door to keep people out. In fact sometimes people would pull the number, go down the street to the cafe, have breakfast, come back and, and hope that they uh, we hadn't gone past their number yet. Well it you know it wasn't like everything stopped all of a sudden. We really didn't know much about them. The big box store started in the southeast and around Atlanta and places like that. There were a lot of home centers. But as they started to open, uh, we really decided that we weren't going to respond uh, very much in terms of changing. Yeah, we all knew it was coming. And, and, and they're starting to put people like us out of business right and left. Yeah, I mean, they're within blocks of us. We went for many a year where we would lose money in the winter quarter, break even on the second quarter, make back what we'd lost in the first quarter, and we'd make a little money in the fourth quarter. It took us some time to realize we lost all this business to Home Depot and Lowe's. Why is the contractor still coming in here? It is really important to know the suppliers that have the material that you need. And that, that's one of the things that you learn with efficiency and frugality and thinking ahead and making what you have stretch. It took us a while to sort through this and figure it out. Oh, hey, you know, if we get these contractors in and out of here fast, if we provide them with quality material so they can take 40 studs back to the job and they can use all 40 and still have to sort through them, they're going to be back. It isn't just a transaction. It's, 
It's a long-term relationship that depends on so many different factors. And if we don't have their trust, we really don't have a relationship. We hung in there and pretty soon we were one of the few left. We're a link in a very complex chain between the forest and the end product, the family. And a lot of times we have to reach across a couple of links in order to make sure that that chain stays in place. And the contractor knows that. He can rely on us to move heaven and earth so that he retains trust with his customer because that's his livelihood. All of us old school guys have had to embrace the new world, but we still carry with us a legacy and those old fashioned values, helpfulness, service, knowledge, that's why they call it old-fashioned values. They don't just happen today. They have to be learned and carried on and taught from generation to generation. Well, look at the, the family we built. And the, look at the type of people that come in here. It's just marvelous. We have a legacy of trust. Trust is hard to build and easy to lose.